In the last few years, cold plunges have gained a lot of popularity. Today's video, I want to discuss some of the science and some of the research behind cold plunges, give you guys a better idea if they're worth it. So let's get right into it. All right, welcome to the video, everyone. When it comes to cold water immersion, this is the list of attributed benefits that we typically will see. Now, I want to take a deeper look into some of the research and actually find if there is evidence to support these claims. Now, this list, we're going to cross each off as we go, but they consist of decreases in inflammation and swelling, reduction of soreness, boosting of endorphins and hormones, stress reduction, fat alteration, increases in metabolism and weight loss. And lastly, I want to take a look at the effects on hypertrophy. All right, so let's first jump into inflammation and swelling. So the way this process works is that exercise causes damage to our muscles, which those damaged muscles then release different metabolites into our bloodstream. So knowing this allows us to have something to actually measure. A 2023 systematic review, including 20 different studies, which I will reference a lot throughout this video, looked at our body's levels of creatine kinase and LDH, which which is essentially lactic acid. These are involved in inflammation responses, and cold water immersion seems to show reductions in creatine kinase levels and lactic acid levels after 24 hours. Now, lactic acid is a byproduct of exercise, so when we exercise, it builds up in our muscles, and our body can utilize lactic acid to establish more energy, but we can have too much of it, and that can impede movement as well. Now, lactic acid is kind of surprisingly a complex topic, and what you need to know is that cold water immersion immersion reduces lactic acid levels. Cool. And creatine kinase levels also seem to be decreased. Now this is released when muscle is damaged. Creatine kinase is an enzyme that aids in the breakdown of ATP into ADP. Okay, so if that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. Essentially, it's saying that it helps us utilize energy when we're doing strenuous activity. Now I'm going to add more reading materials for anyone in the description that wants to know a little bit more. And in my opinion, this seems like it should be good for those wanting to get back to activity as soon as possible. But for those looking to maximize muscle growth, typically muscle damage is one of the driving factors behind hypertrophy. But I'll touch a little bit more on that at the end. So it does seem like there are decreases in exercise induced inflammation. Now I think it's important that we're completely transparent. Some studies show reduction in inflammation and swelling and some didn't. And that's why a meta-analysis is an that's why a meta-analysis and systematic reviews are a little bit better to paint a more clear picture. That's a tongue twister. It's essentially an amalgamation of all of the research, and it looks like there needs to be more research into inflammation and swelling to be definitive. But the next item on our list seems to have more clear research, and that's on soreness. So muscle soreness occurs when we damage our muscles. When it comes to muscle soreness, everyone's gonna experience this differently. Some soreness is immediate and some is delayed. This is what we call DOMS delayed onset muscle soreness. If you're well versed in the exercise science world, this is a pretty common topic. We can also use an RPE scale to determine our perceived soreness. This is typically used as a rate of perceived exertion on how hard you're actually working, but it can be applied here as well. Well, the same systematic review was able to state that one of the main findings was that post-exercise cold water immersion reduced DOMS and RPE immediately. Okay, so there's some immediate benefits, but no significant effects on DOMS or RPE at the 24 to 48 hour mark. So this is just one piece of the puzzle, but it does look like there is some evidence for some short term reduction of soreness. But why is this? That might be explained in our next topic, endorphins. Now endorphins and hormones I group together and what are they exactly? Endorphins are your body's natural painkiller. They relieve pain and create a general feeling of well-being. Hormones are a chemical structure that move around the body and help control all sorts of functions in the body. Now this is a very complex topic. Of course there's more reading materials in the description if you need more. So now when it comes to using cold water immersion it seems like one of the biggest benefits might be the boost of dopamine that you feel. And that boost can be up to 250 50%. Now dopamine is the feel good hormone. It's a neurotransmitter that plays a role in the following movement, memory, pleasure, reward, and motivation, behavior, and cognition, attention, and more. Like most things, we want to experience that equilibrium, too low of dopamine, and you might notice that you are tired, unmotivated, unhappy, 
having memory loss, mood swings, and so on. Too high of dopamine and you might be experiencing things like euphoria, overly energized, and have a high sex drive. The negative side of having too high of dopamine levels is that you're having trouble sleeping, having poor impulse control, or maybe you're more aggressive. And this is all right from the Mayo Clinic. And it does seem like cold exposure, whether it's in a cold plunge or a shower, there seems to be sufficient data showing that endorphins seem to increase with exposure to the cold and especially dopamine. Now there's so many hormones, I really only want to focus on a couple. And one of those is testosterone. And as far as it comes to cold water immersion increasing testosterone levels, a study stated that it was not found with cold water stimulation and might have a negative effect. Exercise can boost testosterone levels. And the only hypothesis that had some merit is cold water swimming. Those swimming in the cold might be experiencing this, but this is simply just a hypothesis. We also see some changes in norepinephrine. Its function is to help mobilize the brain and body in stressful situations, aiding in that fight or flight response. After three months of regular cold water immersion, there seems to be increases in norepinephrine, suggesting that it might play a role in pain alleviation, as well as an important role in cold tolerance by non-shivering thermogenesis and insulative peripheral vasoconstriction. It looks like there might be some meaningful effects when it comes to dopamine and hormones, but what about the effects on stress? The next one I want to blow through pretty quickly, cold water immersion increases stress in the moment by stimulating increases in neuroepinephrine and triggering that fight or flight response. But plasma, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, and cortisol levels seem to decrease significantly after a short time of regular cold water exposure, probably due to acclimation or adaptation. Now stress is somewhat subjective here. Walking is where I find my peace of mind, and for each person, this is gonna be somewhat different. And it does look like cold water immersion has some mechanisms to physically reduce stress. But let's move to a topic that everyone has been waiting for, and that is brown fat. Now I've taken four separate anatomy classes in college, and I don't ever remember learning about brown fat. I must have been sick that day. <coughs> Joking aside, brown fat is just another type of adipose tissue that our body holds, and it plays a large role in helping to regulate body temperature. And brown fat activates before you start to shiver. When a cold stress like cold water immersion happens, blood flow increases to this brown fat and increases the activity in brown fat, which increases warmth. Now brown fat has more mitochondria, so they burn more energy when active. But like most things, it might be overblown slightly. But the researchers mentioned that this is less than 20 calories a day. And they also stated that actual brown fat deposits in adult humans are only a few grams. So these are pretty minor benefits. But how does cold water immersion help with weight loss? Well, a study looked at women with a body fat percentage of 30% or more and tracked them exercising in cold water and others just immersed in cold water. They concluded that while cold water exposure did not increase calorie expenditure significantly in obese individuals, exercising regularly in cold water may be beneficial as it may motivate obese people to exercise at a higher intensity for thermal comfort and the water environment may help prevent injuries. After reading a few articles on this topic, it seems like most people are theorizing that your body needs to maintain homeostasis with core temperature, so that's why you're burning more calories. Now this does seem to theoretically check out, but a good deal of the articles that I've read have admitted that there's no conclusive evidence on the effectiveness of this for weight loss. And if you're really trying to lose weight, I'd recommend something that might be more beneficial. If you spend 20 minutes walking, you can burn up to 100 calories. And to me, I think this is a much better solution. Now, the final thing on this list is how cold water immersion affects hypertrophy, which is the growth of muscle. Regular cold water immersion appears to be detrimental for developing muscle strength and hypertrophy, but why? An additional study took a little bit deeper dive into that exact question. Although a bit sciencey, this is what they said. Cold water immersion delayed or inhibited satellite cell activation and suppressed the activation of kinase after acute strength exercise. These effects may have been compounded over time and diminish the expected increases in muscle mass and strength as a result of training. Like I mentioned earlier, how creatine kinase decreased when we used cold water immersion. This has potential to reduce the amount of muscle damage we experience, which is a driving factor involved in hypertrophy. Okay, so overall, cold water immersion can be good for soreness, mental health, 
mental toughness, endorphins, and cold acclimation. Once or twice a week might allow you to recover quicker and get back into the gym faster. And I think it's pretty clear that more research needs to come out of this because there's a lot of possible benefits that I almost added to this list about cardiovascular health, but there was really no conclusive evidence. But one question I do have is, have you looked into the benefits of saunas? Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one.